Cool. So speaking of some of these visualizations, let's go back. We've talked about burn and heat, some of these new fields that we're dealing with now. So again, where the fuel and temperature collide, where that ignition happens, because you can have fuel that exists in your sim that's not near or has not reached ignition temperature, and you can have temperature all over the place, as we know. Temperature just is everywhere. But where the fuel meets the temperature and actually burns, we get the burn field. So in our case, it's this. Now, it's not that interesting. Um, perhaps more interesting is the heat field. So again, these are our flames. And these disappear over time based on the cooling field. But there they are in any case. They kind of look like um, smoke. It's our job to make this look good later by varying the density of this, by coloring it in based on the temperature, and then eventually by adding like texture noise as we've done in the past lesson. Um, in the meantime, let's, uh, let's start going over some extra techniques and whatnot. So what do we got so far? We got this, ba-bam. Now for an explosion, probably makes more sense to actually we're going to animate the volume. We're going to animate how much fuel comes in all of a sudden. We're going to bring it in and then we're going to take it all away. So whenever we're going to do things like that, click the brain down here. That way we can temporarily disable the simulation. So we can, you know, move through here without triggering the simulation by accident. Cool. So for example, we could start with maybe zero on the first frame and then maybe we'll come in just a couple of frames to three. Actually, while I'm even down here, I'm going to change this to 72. We're not going to go that far. Anyway, so we'll put this to 1, and then we'll go to 7, maybe, and I'll just have it taper out to there. Cool. So let's see. I'm going to turn the simulation back on here. So now we go boom. <laughs> So nothing, not too wild, right? Nothing too crazy. Um, for one thing, actually, we'll notice at the end, it's still adding temperature in even after it's done adding the fuel. But you can at least see that the, the simulation is not constant anymore. It's not just always adding flame. So this is kind of our first chance to see a little bit of a baby explosion. It turns on, it, it made like a little mushroom cloud of sorts. And it's kind of in pieces, which is nice. We got little shapes. Cool. Not really that exciting. So what if, instead of going from zero to one, which is what they want you to do, what if we went to two? That's crazy. Now, look at that. Boosh. Now we're actually seeing a, a, a ball. And of course, the, the temperature continues to pummel it up, we have here. Um, that's not so bad. Um, I'm going to animate these two. Let's say if we start at uh, one seems fine, because we'll want that to ignite the thing from the very beginning. But we'll probably want it to taper out over time. So we'll say like, maybe by the end of this, it's back to zero. Uh, the reason why is, I, I guess I always figure um, the ground would still be hot after something like this would happen. And again, this is going to be more of a like a jet of fire coming out of like a, a smokestack or, you know, some sort of dystopian Blade Runner future kind of thing. Um, so I figure that there'd still be like heat coming out. And we'll have it kind of ramp down. So I'm going to make this like point two here. So let's just take a look at that real quick in the parameter viewer. So we got this nice ramp. It's going to be hot and then scale down over the course of the thing. And for our actual thing here, off to on. Um, and actually, what if we even put this up to like one? So it starts with some fuel, ramps in, and then turns off. That's not so bad either. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, got to turn the simulation back on, of course. There we go. And away it goes. 
ba bam not bad so it'd still be having the heat push it up and then um and it's it of course it generated its own heat by virtue of it being an explosion um it generates its own heat it generates even some velocity from that outward movement and again that's called divergence in these kinds of simulations um, again, we, we did some divergence previously to get a, a balloony look. The way that that's controlled here is oh, another one of these things. Now we're going we're gonna to move down. So now we've, we kind of talked about all these simulation settings. I guess they didn't technically talk about viscosity. We're not going to use that. Um, this is kind of to make a underwater look, or, or you want the it to kind of move as one big base of molasses. We absolutely don't want that, so we're gonna keep it at zero. In fact, if you look at the help, you'll see a value of zero uh, creates a more chaotic, turbulent look, and that's actually definitely what we want. So we'll keep it at that. But anyways, we're on the combustion now. Uh, what I'm trying to say is with this divergence business, that's controlled by gas released. So you'll see here, um, when burning happens, where fuel is burnt, this causes burning areas to blow outwards. So that's an explosion. So at 15, we've got that. A good way, as you continue to learn stuff long after this lesson is over, is to just screw with things, like times 10 this amount. We know that that's not going to be good, but it will definitely show us what it's doing. So look at this. Look at this supernova effect we got. It's releasing so much quote gas it's not releasing more fuel what it all it's doing is it's referring to an outward expansion of gas so that's that's what it's talking about it's talking about divergence um so 150 is way too big the 15 before was was kind of lame um maybe if we go to like 50 that'll be all right let's see what we get from that and this is you know this is why we want to use low amounts of voxels as we play with this stuff we want to be able to iterate quickly on this. We don't. We know we don't have what we're looking for yet, so no point of wasting time on expensive simulations. This is still kind of big. I'm gonna say like maybe half that. Let's see what we got here. So remember, we started at 15, so this is gonna be roughly double that. This feels okay so far. Okay, and of course, as everything else, we can always come back and visit this. Um, but this is, this is pretty good. So while we're on that subject, so we've got fire and we can see the, the how hot it is based on the coloration. Um, the cooling rate over here, if we had it be what it originally was at 0.75, um, you'll see it cool down much faster. The fire is not gonna go nearly as far. Um, it would probably help to Let's do, actually, let's kind of do what I was saying a minute ago. I'm going to put this at a very high number. I mean, you can definitely see it. Remember, red is the least hot part before it disappears, as opposed to yellow and then white. Um, if I put this at some crazy number, I don't even know if we're going to get anything from this. Probably not much. There it goes. Yeah, just about nothing. We could see some of the smoke now that was generated from it but it's that's it and then once the uh, fuel burns away we won't even see that anymore but still a little bit of a flare-up so you can definitely see how keeping the cooling rate uh lower will will keep our explosion around longer and that could be cool you know especially if you get a note like hey can we have the fire last longer to the top you know um that kind of thing so what else we got in here? Addition temperature, 0.1. So we're adding a full unit of temperature all over the place. And remember from our visualization before, it goes up to 27. So basically, this is always going to happen. It's always going to ignite. Anywhere there is fuel, and there's even a hint of temperature, it's going to explode. Uh, burn rate and fuel efficiency are related. Um, you can play around with these if you like. Um, the burn rate is going to refer to how, many, how much of the fuel actually performs.